If you're into dry fly fishing and you're hoping to catch some trout on the canals, this is the video for you. Nothing gets more exciting than seeing a rising trout. I will be covering the gears, fly selections, challenges and techniques in catching them. This is Mackenzie District and it is known for its canal system and hydroelectric scheme. There are salmon farms located in part of the canals and outside of these cages you find some of the world's biggest trouts. In this video I'll be showing you how to catch some of these brown trouts that cruises along the banks. They're typically between 1 and 5 pounds. The first step is to decide where to fish. The canal system stretches about 50 kilometers all the way from Tikapo down to Twizel and drains into Lake Benmore. And the beauty is you can fish any parts of the canal as long as it's accessible. When I fly fish the canal, I tend to choose the stretch where there is no one else. Now let's dive right into the action. So fly fishing the canal uh, can be challenging, especially in weather like that. We've got the wind blowing all the way from upstream, but there are ways to tackle them, which is to go uh, in front of the fish and let the wind do the job and drop the fly literally in front of the fish. And try to keep the fly line out of the water uh, and only have your tippet on the surface of the water. Usually the fishes that cruises along the banks of the canals, they are very close to the banks. So you, you got to spot them ahead of time. Otherwise they get spooked very easily. So now we're walking along the banks of the canals looking for any fishes that's cruising along the banks. Here you can see a trout cruising along the edges and took something before it went into the deeper waters. The discoloration of the water on the canals sometimes makes it difficult to spot a fish. Sometimes all you're looking for is a darker shade. So for the first scenario we've got a fish ahead of us. It is about 35 feet away. So it's quite a distance to cast. Um, you could strip all your fly line all the way out which would make it easier and less of these um, false casting. And the important thing is to keep your fly line away from hitting the water and just land the fly in front of the fish. And there you have it. The fish took it on first cast. It is also important to observe the behavior of these fishes. As you can see here, it's a brown trout that's cruising along the banks and there was a dead bee that's drifting past it. He looked up. So you know that this fish is looking up and there's a higher chance that it's going to take something from the surface. Now the second scenario is fishing downstream. This is very useful when there is strong wind coming from the upstream. In this case, I'm ahead of the fish and the fish is swimming up towards me. Very good. So that's how I caught the fish using a blowfly and just fishing on the edges. And the fish saw the fly. I was fishing from upstream. He took it. It's a nice uh, brown. So he took the blowfly and hooked it in the side of the jaw. So I like to bring the fish upstream with me and as they come towards me, they will nicely land inside the net. So here's a POV view of casting downstream where the fish is streaming upstream. I casted a fly downstream and it came up and took it. Now the third scenario is casting directly across right in front of you. This is where the fish is right in front and this is actually my favorite approach. The main challenge here is how to get that close to a fish without spooking it. And normally when I spotted a fish and if I were to fish across I would go right ahead of it at least by 10 meters 
and I would look for bushes or tussocks and hide behind that area. Very good fish. So here's another fish I had spotted. So I went ahead of the fish and I squat down, waited for the fish to come up and basically set up an ambush. To avoid spooking the fish, you've got to be as still as Drax. And as the fish swam past the grasses that provided cover, I made a cast. And he took it on first cast. And if you're tired of all that walking and exercise, you can just sit there uh, and watch for any fish that comes up. Basically cast across when you see one and they'll take it. It's a nice fish. Very beautiful fish. Now the next scenario is fly rejection. If you've casted the fly right in front of the fish and you knew that the fish could see it and it just ignores it, that's rejection. There are a few reasons for a trout to reject the fly. It could be a wrong fly, a wrong size, a tippet that is too visible for the fish, or they're just not looking up. Usually your first cast is your best cast and if the fish started rejecting the fly uh, repetitive casting is not going to help and it's just likely going to spook the fish. At this stage I will either change the same fly to a smaller size or I'll change the pattern of the fly completely. Now when you cast your fly because the fish is so close to the bank you want to avoid landing your fly line on the water at all. In this case, this will spook the fish immediately. Land just the fly and some tippet on the water so there is not much drag. And make sure you watch your fly closely that it is not waterlogged and started sinking. Now here's an example of a bad cast where the fly's got a drag and water loaded. So now I'd like to share with you the gears that I've used on the canals. This is a Sage Foundation 5 weight rod. It's a graphite fast action rod and I've paired it out with a Domain 5 fly reel. And on the reel I've got a Airflow 5 weight tactical fly line. And if you haven't got the budget to buy a proper fly rod, uh, you can always make your own fly rod. And if you haven't watched my previous video, I made a bamboo fly rod uh, two weeks ago. There is also a link for the video up here. And for the tippets that I use on my leader, I use a 3x tippet for streamer fishing. Um, you can use nylon or fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbons are usually a little bit more expensive. Um, but if you're using nymphing or dry fly, I typically go slightly lighter, such as a 4x um, fluorocarbon. And I don't think it's necessary to go as then as 7x, you're just asking for trouble. If you hook the big fish, these break off very easily. And on a bright sunny day, when the water is extremely clear, you might want to go down to 5x um, or even 6x. Now lastly, I like to talk about fly selection. I think the first step is important to observe the surrounding, the weather and the season. Look at the surrounding for insects. Listen for the sounds of crickets and cicadas. It is highly likely that you're going to see some bees, mayflies, dragonflies, beetles, caddis, moths, butterflies. Praying mantis, grasshoppers, and my favorite, the blowfly. This is the Humpy Blue Bottle. The most popular size is size 12 and size 14. 
and this is the Cocky Bondi. They represent beetles, and the popular sizes are size 10 to size 14. And in low light conditions, a black net works very well. For the flies, I use a very simple fly box. I've only got one fly box that I use in the canal. These are the flies that I have in it. At the top row, you can see I've got big flies, including bow flies, beetles, and mayflies. And working down, I've got micro streamers and denzel fly nymphs. And at the bottom, I've got some nymphs. Some of them are weighted, most of them are unweighted. So my preferred fly on the canals, that's the blowfly. Tied in a humpy peacock style with a blue belly. And if I'm using a dry fly, I will be using a floatin, especially on the top. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It does took me quite a bit of time to film and put this all together. So I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, share, likes, comment and subscribe. Tight lines, 